Chapter 9, The Blessing Way Once again, I went to my parents. I have done as you asked, I told them. I have waited a year. Now I want to go and be a warrior to fight for our people. I ask your blessings to become a Marine. My parents were sad, but they saw that I was determined. I had kept my promise. So, even though it was not yet the end of the school year, they gave me their permission. However, there was one thing I had to agree to before I went to enlist. I had to go with my parents to a singer who would do a ceremony for me. With the protection of Jose Oja, the blessing way, I might be kept safe when I went into danger. I was glad to do that. The blessing way is done for all that is good. That is its only purpose. The singer we went to was Big Schoolboy. That was his Navajo name, Oltai Tosh. He was also known as Frank Mitchell, although I always addressed him as Hosteen, our Navajo word that is a term of respect. He and my uncle Earl were good friends, having gone to school together at Fort Defiance. My uncle had worked with him over the years when Big Schoolboy ran a freighting business, carrying goods back and forth by horse-drawn wagon between his home in Chinle and Gallup. Big Schoolboy also belonged to the Catholic Church, as did most of the members of our family now, especially those of us who had been to mission schools. By the time I reached high school, I was no longer the only one of my family who had been sent off to school. My three younger brothers, my baby sister, and quite a number of my cousins had followed my lead. Although my parents knew less about Catholicism than their children did, they had been baptized and went with us when we attended church. But being Catholic did not mean we would forget the holy people and our Navajo way. It was an honor to have Hosteen Mitchell do the protection ceremony for me. He was a widely respected man, not just a singer, but also a former member of our tribal council. I was also glad because I liked him very much. Respected and important as he was, he was a very modest person and wise. Best of all, he was fun to be with. Whenever we were together, he made me laugh. I saw him often when I was home for the summer because I would sometimes help him out with his work. Although he no longer ran a freighting business full time, he still moved some goods and welcomed my assistance. Even though I was still quite small, by the time I turned 16, I had grown very strong. I could easily lift bags that weighed more than I did. Because of that, he sometimes called me Wolachi, which means aunt. I took that as a joking compliment, as everyone knows that ants are powerful despite their tiny size. Since we had both been to mission school, he would tell me stories about his own school days. One of my favorites was about something said by the old priest, Father Duffy. I was riding beside Hosteen Mitchell on his wagon one day when he turned to me and held one finger up to his lips. I knew what that meant. He was about to tell another of his stories about school. You know, Hosteen Mitchell said, it is hard for anyone to speak our language unless he has known it since birth. However, some of the priests thought they could speak Navajo and would try to include it in their sermons. As a result, they sometimes said things that were hilarious without meaning to. I am sure you know what I mean. I nodded, but did not say anything. I did not want to break into his story with my own memories about some of the mistakes I'd heard white men make while trying to talk Indian. I waited politely. A story is better if you have to wait a little bit for it to be spun out. Hosteen Mitchell gently flicked the reins to encourage the horses as they pulled us up the hill. When we reached the top, 
he continued his tale. There was this one old priest, Father Duffy. He tried to use our Navajo word for people, Bila Ashdali, the ones who have five fingers. He meant to say that all human beings are alike, but instead of saying that all people have five fingers, he said that we all had five of something else. Hostin Mitchell chuckled. People tried not to laugh, but every Navajo in the church was just choking as he or she attempted to keep quiet. Hostin Mitchell also liked to talk with me about the similarities between our Indian beliefs and those of the Catholics. He did so the day after my parents agreed to allow me to join the Marines. You know, Wolachi, he said to me, tapping his lip with his long forefinger, that golden rule and those other things that Jesus Christ said to people needed to live by? I nodded. Well, Hostine Mitchell continued, that golden rule and those other things he did makes me think that maybe Jesus was a Navajo. Then he laughed. If any of those Christian white traders behaved the way their Bible tells them to live, they would all go broke. I think that we do not need to worry too much about that, I said. Then both of us laughed even harder. I was eager to go and sign up for the Marines, but I knew I would have to be patient and wait for Hostine Mitchell to tell us when he could do the blessing way. Perhaps it would be weeks. I wanted to ask him when he would be free to do the ceremony, but since my parents had already requested that he do it, I knew it would be impolite for anyone to ask again. Not a word was said about it when we came back to our Hogan that evening. Somehow, I managed to hold my tongue. Finally, he climbed up onto his wagon to leave. Hostine Mitchell must have known what was on my mind and had been teasing me by saying nothing. Just before he shook the reins, he lifted his finger up to his mouth as if he had just remembered something. Do not forget, he said to my parents, I will be doing Blessing Way next weekend for my big friend, Wolachi. Then he winked at me. Some of you, my grandchildren, have had Blessing Way sung for you. Some of our chant ways have been forgotten. But Blessing Way is as strong as ever. So you know what it is like to have so many family members and friends and well-wishers gathered around the Hogan, all of them putting their minds together to wish success and goodness for you. You know what it is like to be the one sung over, to be washed in the morning with soapweed, your clothing piled there in front of you on the blanket as the bathing songs are sung. You know what it is like to feel the beauty of the sunrise touching you and giving you strength as the corn pollen is sprinkled on the earth into crosses where you kneel. Then you, too, are blessed with that pollen and you carry the memories of the goodness of blessing way with you. So it was for me. I remember looking at the dry painting made by Hostine Mitchell. Sometimes a blessing way does not include dry painting. This time, though, nothing was to be left out. I was to be given the utmost help and protection against all the dangers that might come. Hostine Mitchell's fingers delicately sprinkled golden grains to make the figure of Pollen Boy on the mound where everything was prepared. Then, as the sun reached the middle of the sky, Hostine Mitchell stood up. Bring in the food, he called. It is the ceremony's day now. There is not much to say about the time between the noon meal and the evening when the ceremony began again, with the blessing of everything from the sacred items and the hogan to all of the personal possessions people had with them. I was free to do what I wanted during that time, with the exception of work. But all I did was find a quiet place and sit, thinking only of the ceremony that was being done for me. I was feeling peaceful and grateful that I was so loved and cared for, 
by my family and our friends. I did not think even once about the journey that would soon begin for me. Even now, 60 years later, I still feel the beauty of that night. I can hear the 12 Hogan songs that began the evening, those songs that Talking God sang about the home of changing woman, those songs that were sung around the mountain where traveling was done. Song after song followed, every one of them chanted by Hostine Mitchell. These days, other singers help out and do some of the songs, but Hostine Mitchell always did every single song himself. So it went all through the night with songs and blessing. Finally, the dawn songs were sung, and then one more song for all those songs that had gone before. Haya naya yana. I have come upon it. I have come upon blessing. People, my relatives, I have come upon blessing. People, my relatives, blessed. From there dawn comes. She comes upon me with blessing before her. From there. She comes upon me with blessing behind her. From there. She comes upon me with blessing behind her. It is blessed before her. It is blessed. I have come upon it. I have come upon blessing. Hostine Mitchell took pollen from his pouch and used it to bless my body. He gave me four pinches of pollen to eat and then sprinkled a trail that circled from me to the door and around the south side of the fire. Then he handed me the pollen pouch. I stood and followed the trail outside. I took five steps toward the dawn and stood there, feeling the warmth of the sun touching me. I reached into the pollen bag and took some out to scatter from north to south. I inhaled the dawn four times, giving a prayer to myself, to the new day, and to all that exists. There was truly blessing all around me and all through me. With that new dawn, with my mind and my body, my spirit and my emotions in good balance, I was ready to begin my journey as a warrior for America.